Before I begin, I want to start off with a little exercise. English is the only Latin-derived language that doesn't use gender noun associations. So just for a minute, let's pretend like they did, and let's assign these nouns a gender. Easy one, makeup, feminine, right? Trucks, masculine. Hockey, masculine. Swimming, maybe both. Scientists, more masculine. Construction, definitely masculine. Doctor, maybe both. So why is it that we associated the medical professional to be both male and female, but yet the construction worker and the scientists we associate to be predominantly masculine? It's because nurturing or caring professions align with the prevailing attitudes about women. This is unconscious bias, and this is what causes the gender disparity in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM for short. Canada is viewed as a progressive nation in popular culture, so why is it that we have one of the lowest percentages of women in engineering? And this percentage isn't changing. We've known about gender bias for about 30 years, and although some industries like medicine are seeing improvements in the gender gap, engineering is not. This graph shows that although the number of students going into engineering is increasing, the percentage of that that's female remains the same. This is a big problem, with a lot of underlying causes and a wide range of repercussions. And although I don't have time to talk about everything, I'm going to try to explain why it's a big deal, what causes the gender bias, and ways we all can work together to try to fix it. So why do we care about the demographic going into STEM? It's because we live in a time when we're facing complex global issues and an unprecedented rate of technological advancement. If our country wants to remain on the forefront of innovation and drive our economy in the process, we need to educate our best thinkers, leaders, and doers. Right now, Canada has a shortage of engineers. And if we're going to exclude half of the national population solely based on gender, you're going to miss out on a lot of promising talent. It's also economically beneficial for companies to invest in a diverse workforce. Companies that have the highest percentage of women outperform those that have the lowest percentages. Now let's talk about why women aren't entering STEM. Perhaps the biggest contributor is Self-concept. Science says that girls and women need to see a reflection of themselves in the courses and career paths that they choose. Right now, the engineering industry, including schools, does not showcase an equal demographic, which makes it extremely hard for girls to see themselves in those engineering roles. Additionally, studies show that girls have lower self-confidence compared to boys. This means that girls who are just as capable, so they're getting the same grades, still perceive themselves to be not smart enough to continue with the hard subjects. It also means they're more likely to drop out or switch majors in university. Even when women are rewarded, they feel like they still don't deserve it. So obviously, this is a STEM perception issue and not linked to a woman's ability or a woman's performance. However, external influences can also shape how girls perceive STEM. Unfortunately, teachers, guidance counselors, and parents often have outdated perceptions of what engineering actually is. They view engineering to be an inhospitable career choice for women and unconsciously promote STEM to boys instead. Studies also say that girls who don't have career guidance or don't have a role model won't even consider going into STEM, and this fact has only increased for less privileged groups. However, all these things I've talked about so far talk about why girls aren't going into STEM, but there's also a big problem with retaining women in industry after they graduate. That's because women are often charged with raising children or caring for family members, which can make it extremely hard for them to rise to leadership positions. We need to increase the integration of women in STEM by conveying that 
STEM is a tool that can be used to open so many doors. The best way to get this message out is by supporting the outreach programs that are already working to promote STEM in school to girls. We've got to create excitement around math and science and let girls know it's okay for them to shine. They don't have to hold back. And this encouragement has got to start soon, before they're 14 years old. And it's got to persist throughout high school and throughout university when things really start to get tough. By supporting outreach groups, we're forming partnerships and building alliances with like-minded individuals. By joining together, we can work on these issues collectively. We also need to make sure that we're properly educating our society on equality, diversity, and inclusion. A study recently found that a lot of trusted diversity training programs did increase the level of knowledge people had about unconscious bias, and it promoted collective action. But unfortunately, it also decreased a woman's sense of belonging in STEM because it highlighted the stereotypes. If we want to fix this, we have to make sure that our diversity training programs showcase positive female role models in STEM and that it conveys the message that all these problems can be fixed. If we mandate proper EDI training in our schools and in industry, we're going to establish a culture of intolerance for biased behavior. And it's not just up to women to fix this issue. Enabling and educating men is perhaps one of our most powerful tools. We need to teach men how to remove the obstacles that women face, instead of teaching women how to jump over them. If men stop standing by and refuse to participate in projects and events that offer low diversity, we're going to strengthen that culture of bias and tolerance. This might be difficult for them. It's, it's hard to pass up on opportunities, right? But my advice for them would to be start getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, because it's the world women in STEM live in every day. The professional industry can also do its part to promote equality and enable success for women. Having flexible working hours and a flexible environment can facilitate the success for women who are the primary caregivers. Ensuring transparency in pay rates and enabling a clear HR process for discrimination and harassment will also establish a workplace culture of equality. Finally, introducing proper EDI training programs in work for employees will eliminate unconscious behavior in day-to-day -day activities like meetings. It's up to all of us to be educated on unconscious bias and take collective action to remove the obstacles that girls and women face. It's not about convincing every girl to enter STEM. It's about ensuring that the girls that do have a passion for math and science know that they can and should continue, that they don't have to hold back and limit themselves, and that they have great futures ahead of them in STEM. I hope that by listening to this talk today, it sparks a conversation. You begin to see things differently, and you consciously think about your actions while shaping the future. Because when women are empowered, society benefits. Thank you. Woo